For this video, I'd like to focus on some different exponent properties, specifically the powers of both products and quotients. So the first problem we want to think about is what happens when you raise an exponent to an exponent. And the general pattern is that you're going to multiply the exponents. But you don't want to just memorize that, you want to understand it. So let's think about the inside first. 2 to the third power. That is 2 multiplied by itself three times. And then we're going to square that. So we want to take this whole expression here and multiply it by itself. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 multiplied by 2 times 2 times 2. And in total, you have six twos multiplied together. So that's where the pattern comes from, that if you have an exponent and you raise it to an exponent, you just multiply. So if you had 4 to the 3rd raised to the 7th, then you would have 4 to the 21st power. So in practice, you can just follow the pattern, but you never want to use a pattern like this that you don't actually understand. So make sure you understand it from basic principles and can essentially follow this path of logic. Now, what happens if we also have a product on the inside and that's raised to some power? So let's think about this again from basic principles and see if we can derive a pattern. And so 3 squared we know is just 3 times 3, and 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and we're squaring this. So we got to multiply this whole thing by itself. So this is 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and multiplied by itself, 3 times 3. I need a little more space here times another four twos. And at this point, we can count. You have four threes, so it'd be three to the fourth, times by, it looks like four there and four there, so you have eight twos, so two to the eighth. So what you can notice from our original pattern is that essentially this term and this term both separately were raised to the second power. And we know that when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So in some sense, it's like this 2, this exponent, is distributed to both of these terms. And we're going to see that on this bottom one, too. It's just now we got to consider the negative exponent. So let's work through that one now. And the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the negative exponent as positive but in the denominator. Because remember, 4 to the minus 2, instead of repeated multiplication, when it's a negative exponent, you want to think about it in terms of repeated division. So this is really like divide by 4 twice. So it's going to end up in the denominator with a positive 2 as the exponent, and also times 3 to the 4th. And when you move it down, you're just left with 1 up top. And we're cubing this. So it's going to follow the same pattern as the one above. Basically, this cube is going to distribute to all of these. You know, you can think about this as 1 to the 1st if you want. and what we're going to get is essentially 1 cubed divided by 4 squared cubed, which is 4 to the 6. We're just multiplying those exponents. And 3 to the 4th cubed would be 3 to the 12th. And if we want, well, first of all, we can rewrite the 1 cubed as just 1. But if we want, we can put them in the numerator with negative exponents. So that's possible as well. So this would become 4 to the minus 6 times 3 to the minus 12. Because if it's positive in the denominator, then when it goes to the numerator, it becomes negative, and vice versa. Because remember, it from this side, 3 to the minus 12 just means divide by 3 12 different times. But if you want a better sense of essentially why this cube goes to all of these different factors here, you could just do what we did for the second example. Rewrite this, let me make a little space here, rewrite this expression as 1 over 4 times 4 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and it's cubed, so we'll have to write this out three different times. So you have that first one, second one, and third one, and so essentially you have three times as many of the 4s and three times as many of the 3s. So you'd have six 4s in total, two from each of these, and you'd have 12 threes in total. Four here, four here, and four here, which is exactly what we got in the bottom. But also notice you didn't necessarily 
have to rewrite this as a positive exponent. I just did that to make more sense of what's going on. The, from the beginning, the 3 essentially distributes to both of them. And you'd get 4 to the minus 6 over 3 to the 12th, but that 3 to the 12th can come back to the numerator and become a negative. Okay, let's start going through some different examples now from the exercises. So we've got to select the equivalent expression. And let me just rewrite it. So we have 3 to the 3rd times 6 to the 6 all raised to the minus 3. So in essence, when it's raised to the minus 3, we're going to divide by this expression three times. So it really becomes 1 over 3 to the 3rd times 6 to the 6th raised to the positive 3 power. And let's go through this one from basic principles. And the next ones will just apply the rule. So in the denominator, we would have this expression multiplied three times. But let me first expand what this expression looks like. 3 to the third is just 3 times 3 times 3. 6 to the sixth, well, there are six sixes multiplied together. And then we're going to cube that expression. So I'm not going to write all that out. But basically, you're going to get 1 over this thing three different times. And from each of them, you have three threes and six sixes. So in total, you're tripling each of the amount of uh, these numbers. So you'll have nine threes and you'll have 18 sixes. So the pattern just says an exponent to an exponent you multiply. And then if you have a product here that this exponent essentially just goes to both of the exponents. So you get three to the ninth and six to the 18th which you could rewrite with negative exponents as three to the minus nine times six to the minus 18. And you could have done that from the beginning because this minus three would just distribute into both of those. You get three to the minus nine and three to the minus 18, exactly what we got from looking at it from basic principles. So we just have to decide which of these is right. And basically, if they're in the numerator, they're both negative. If they're in the denominator, they're both positive. But you're not going to see one in the numerator and one in the denominator that are of different sign, or of the same sign, I should say. So 6 to the 18th over 3 to the 9th, well, this would be 6 to the 18th times 3 to the minus 9, which you can see, it's not the same thing. Oh, and oops, I wrote that as 3 to the minus 18. That should be 6 to the minus 18. So this one, A, is not right, but it looks like B is correct because we had that right here. And if we had the negatives, we could then just rewrite it with positive exponents in the denominator. We could check the other one just to make sure. But again, it's not going to match up because we know the exponent on 3 in, when it's in the numerator has to be a negative number. It's only positive when the 3 is in the denominator. So this one can't be right either. OK, let's move on to another problem. Very similar one. So now I'm just going to apply the rules. Exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. So we have x to the fourth over 7 to the minus 8, all raised to the minus 7. So this exponent, this negative 7, is going to distribute to the top and the bottom. In the top, you get x to the minus 28. And in the bottom, you get 7 to the 56th power. And there are a couple ways we can write it. We can put both in the numerator. You can have x to the minus 28th times 7 to the minus 56, because it was in the denominator as a positive, and so it'll go in the numerator as a negative exponent. Or we can put them both in the denominator and make them positive. So you'd have a 1 up top, and then it would be x to the 28th, because x to the minus 28 in the numerator is essentially divide by x 28 times. And then the 7 to the 56 we know is already positive when it's in the denominator. So any of these three forms will work for us. And let's see, it looks like when they're both in the numerator, they're both negative, so that would be choice B, so that one's right. But you can see that C is wrong because when 7's in the denominator, it's supposed to be positive. And A is wrong because when X is in the numerator, it's supposed to be negative. 
So those are not correct, but choice letter B will work. And moving on to another problem. We've got 5 to the 4th times B to the minus 10, all raised to the negative 6 power. So since we have a product, this exponent is going to essentially distribute to both of those. And so exponent to an exponent we multiply. So you get 5 to the 4 times negative 6, which would be negative 24. And B to the minus 10 times minus 6, which would be positive 60. You could also write it with the negative exponent in the denominator becoming positive. So you could write it as b to the 60th divided by 5 to the 24th. Uh, so let's go see and see if any of these are our correct answers here. So 5 to the 4th, we know that's not right because 5 is raised to the minus 24th when it's in the uh, numerator. And again, that's not going to be choice B because 5 should be to the minus 24 power. But choice C would be correct because we just rewrote 5 to the minus 24, but in the denominator as 5 to the 24th. Because this just means divide by 5 24 times. And B to the 60 is in our numerator.